So we were just talking about it is a, a, a bit of an odd location to you know the compressors over there and why are we walking down this street to here? And the the kind of reasoning was that the, the Environmental Protection Agency, if this were sited at the compressor station, they would consider it, well, you've got an air monitor that's measuring the compressor station, not really the community. And it was deemed that this would be a more representative site of the community. That's very debatable, really, because as you know, at the north parcel there, that's actually going to integrate over Germantown, Quincy Point, and this neighborhood in arguably a better way than this location. But it is really uh, a big uh, step forward that we do have this here. Um, it, it's a it's a Department of Environmental Protection uh, level air quality monitoring station. So it's it's monitoring at the same continuous um, time step, the same uh, air pollutants, criteria pollutants that are being measured in the whole network that the Department of Environmental Protection has throughout the Commonwealth. Um, so, so basic um, air, air quality metrics. Um, it also is measuring uh, in, in, uh, meteorological uh, information. Or is, are those up yet? Is that cold? Is that it or no? Is it cold? Not yet. Not yet. But one of the things that that was really important here that is actually goes beyond the typical Department of Environmental Protection monitoring stations is that we we know, you all know, that the winds here and the coastal environment create those conditions in which the plumes can actually be downwelling um, and, and, and come right down to the ground level at times. And so this site, unlike the other sites, will have a meteorological station that have wind speed and direction and allow us to start to understand the conditions like you know maybe the next day we can know oh the conditions are set up that we're probably going to have downwelling of those plumes so neighbors can then protect themselves better with that meteorological information that pairs with the the air quality information can i just ask are they then committed to telling neighbors this information is the epa committed to like informing the neighborhood about what's going on well, it would be the DEP, and then I think that, I mean, Alice will know better about that, but, it, you know, the, the EPA role was really to kind of, was more like, you know, it's going to be taken more seriously if it's not right at the compressor site, and I think the DEP went, kind of went along with that. Is that how you would interpret it, Alice? Yeah, it was, but it, to me, it's questionable, like, like Nathan said, is that, okay, like Nathan made comment, you know, that they asked us to comment. They said, well, you know, where do you want it? And we said, well, of the three possible locations that you've given us, the best one was the West Bank down by the compressor station. We weren't doing that to screw with Enbridge, although we'd love to do that. That was not the point. The point was that was actually the better location to have it. And my thing was, was that when we said, okay, they're, they're not allowing us to do that. They're saying it won't be part of the regional plan. So we're kind of stuck with this. And Nathan said, well, okay, but if you're stuck with that, you know, you're going to have different problems, you know, something that you call the big building effect with, right. with Calpine. Uh, and okay, so how is that any different than it being down there? And how is it being this close to Calpine any different than it being that close to the compressor station? That's where I get a little bit, you know, fuzzy. And then another thing, and I don't know if you noticed this, Nathan, so you can, are you all familiar with our purple air monitors that we have around the basin? We have a few more to put up, so if anyone's like close to the area, get a hold of us. Um, the other day, all of, the mo all of our monitors, anything over 50 is starting to get into bad air. All of our monitors were in the high 90s or over 100. But the PM 2.5 monitor of the MWRA that is situated right beside the MWRA building down there was at 57. 
So it was a total outlier. And all I could think of was, because I'm not the scientist, was, oh, the big building effect. <laughs> and I don't know if that... Possibly. Yeah. yeah. So, but here we are. Um, we have it. It's certainly better than what we had before, which was nothing. Um, and I, I wonder, is Council Clarity still here? Yes. yes. So, uh, thank you very, thank you very much, Professor Phillips. <laughs> Science! <Yeah. laughs> uh, Council Clarity uh, wrote a great letter to Mayor Kokoros and Braintree to talk about the potential of a public-private partnership with the town of Braintree and FRAX for a sister monitor. And uh, Mayor Kokoros really embraced the idea. There was an article in the paper yesterday uh, in the patch, I think, about it. And so the town of Braintree is going to help finance a sister station that Mike Lang, if he's around here, is working with Belt um, to potentially have it on the Belt property. And so it's like, it's like a test. It's like saying, okay, your monitor is saying this, but our monitor is saying that. What's, you know, what's going on here? So there's work to be done on that. We have to suss out exactly how this is, is going to work out. The company that actually sold that to the DEP is working with us. So it's, you know, it's the same information. It's the same kind of level. Um, and it's just a matter of, again, like I said, sussing out the science of, of location. Do you want one monitor, or would, you, would it be better to have two? And so potentially, we'll be able to triangulate the basin, and perhaps have one in Braintree, and then one in Quincy, and then have this one. So again, with the purple air monitors, we have triangulated the basin. It's like a big circle if you look at the monitors. And way back in 2016, when current started this mess. Um, when we had the PM 2.5 monitors, we would triangulate the basin to see, you know, we have one in Weymouth, and we have one in Quincy, we have one in Braintree, to see what it looked like for the PM 2.5. And just a really quick thing, and then I'll shut up. Um, particulate matter 2.5, okay, so that's the size of the granule that's going into your lungs, is far worse than they said it was. So they'd say, well, this level's okay. It's not okay. Um, and Reverend Betsy grabbed a Harvard article that we um, put on our Facebook a month or so ago, I think, about how PM 2.5 is so bad for our health. And we in the basin know it has caused us to have higher than average for the state COPD, heart disease, uh, and this is the crazy one, the one, the one that, like a what? Diabetes. PM 2.5 is causative of diabetes too. So, you know, people, what, what the health impact assessment tried to say, oh, you people are fat and lazy and you smoke. And yeah. So get out and get some exercise and quit smoking. And it was like, no, <laughs> we're living with high levels a PM 2.5 on a relatively frequent basis. So that's one of the things that this will monitor along with the volatile organic compounds. And someone asked about, um, yes, you asked about um, would, the, would the state tell you when your air is bad? And the answer is no. However, you can go, once this is up and running, it's part of the state's website and you can go online and you can look at the figures. So the PM 2.5 monitor, the temporary one that's over by the MWR, right? You can go on that and get real time information about what it looks like. But as we've proven from the other day, it might not be accurate. So hopefully this will be accurate or at least more accurate than what they've got over there. It is further away from Calpine. The temporary monitor over there is like right up against the building. So I, you know, the figures may be a little bit specious, but um, but anyone who wants to take a look at the little shed, and I was hoping that pole was the was the weather station, so I have a funny feeling we're going to have to. That pole is just the electrical. Yeah. 
Yeah, it looks like the, the wires are there. Yeah, they, you know, but they just here. haven't hooked up to the actual sensors. So it okay. looks like it's kind of in the midst of being put in. Yeah, they had a problem where the, the, the sewer pipe, apparently, that big sewer pipe that goes to the end of the right? runs through here, so they couldn't put the underground pipes, so the underground wires, so they had to go up above ground, and that's kind of what's held it up again. Uh, but fingers crossed, it'll be up and running in a couple of weeks. So if anyone wants to take a nice look at what the state bought us, <laughs> I encourage you to do so. <laughs> You like the color? <laughs> yes, <okay. laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, we, were ta we talked about maybe having a little standout on the bridge if anybody is interested. Um, we thank you all for coming today to just celebrate our new monitor and celebrate your hard work. Celebrate all the Okay, so the question is if the numbers are high, if we have consistently high PM2.5 VOCs that go over um, the tell limits or whatever for the state, what will happen? So one of the things that, well, okay, so let's be subversive about this. We know that this area is likely out of compliance with the Clean Air Act for criteria air pollutants like ozone, the NOx, um, sulfur dioxide, and I'm looking at Nathan going, am I saying it right? <laughs> and um, because the DEP does not measure um, what they call fugitive emissions. So that's emissions from all the cars that's on the bridge. Right. That's emissions from the tankers that sit for days at Sitco or Twin Rivers offloading, and they are idling. They're idling diesel fuel because it's illegal for them to hook up their electric lines to the land, which is crazy. Maybe we should talk to Senator O'Connor about that. You know, that there is a law that this ships can't hook up to electricity on the land and so they have to sit there and idle the diesel fuel. The DEP does not include that in the figures when they permit another facility like the compressor station. That's where, as Representative Moschino said, the cumulative emission information comes into play. So if it's over, you know, consistently in some then we can get, then we have to sit down and say, okay, who's the stinker? Who's violating the Clean Air Act in the basin? And we're going to have to look at, and we like to pick on Enbridge, but we're going to have to look at Sitco, at Spray, at Twin Rivers, at the pelletizing plant, at all of these facilities that are just dumping and say, and also, you know, unfortunately, there is the traffic, which eh, you can't control so much, except maybe if we had public transportation, we would have that problem. But that those are the kind of things that will be looked at. Oh, so we can identify where the pollutants are coming from, the pollutant is. We might not be, that's the problem. So once you realize you've got a problem, then you have to sort of micromanage and go and say, okay, you know, well, Sitco's putting this much in, and Twin Rivers is putting this much in, and, then, right. and so if, if the whole basin is out of whack, do you say, okay, you all have to work to lower your and emissions? Who says that? Who tells them that? That would be the EPA. Okay. So the individual town cities would do that? Unfortunately, when it comes to this kind of thing, because it's under the Federal Clean Air Act, uh, the municipalities, again, don't have a lot of. And Weymouth would have no power anyway if Edward was in that minute. They got right. Right. They signed away their right to fight. Yeah. So, any other questions? How about the FERC? Give us an update. Okay, so FERC. Um, <laughs> Senator O'Connor had, had words to say about FERC and what's going on with FERC at this point. Yeah, we'll give Algonquin a rehearing on this. What does it mean? We don't know. We don't know yet. 
Um, but that's where we are there. But what has happened as a result is an interesting thing. Um, our friend Kathy Christopherson kind of, she trolls the bird docket every day. And yesterday, a pipeline, uh, FERC issued some order on a pipeline in South Dakota. And Algonquin intervened on that docket. And the reason they, they intervened was they're worried about Weymouth. And Ooh. the decision in Weymouth, now they have nothing to do with this pipeline in South Dakota. It's not them, it's nothing to do with them. But they intervened because they said, Weymouth. Give yourselves a pat on the back, guys, because this is a big deal. They are, this, these are the two things they did yesterday. They're scared, which is good. That's good because they should be scared because we're scared because they're destroying our planet. So that's that's the FERC update that I got. Thank you. 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 So, anyone who would like to do a little stand out, we're going to walk back down and go up on the bridge for a couple of minutes. Anyone who would like to go over to Quincy to their wonderful event on Palmer Street, um, put it in your phone. I think it's 333 Palmer Street. Uh, not that hard to get to. And um, if you want to go over there and see what's up in Quincy, that's great. Hang with us for a little bit. And thank you so, so much for everything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can you guys tell us what's happening here today? We're actually live right now on YouTube. Oh, you want to give us a I'll hold us sign. Go ahead, take it. Yeah, well, we're commemorating a very big event and milestone in this six year battle uh, against the compressor station. And that is that the air quality monitoring on the other side of that fence is now installed and at least partially, we think, operating. And so we're getting the data. Um, we already know from other data that the air quality is degraded in this Four River Basin, uh, having uh, real impacts on the health of people in the neighborhood right next to us. There's houses right behind us. Um, and uh, so this is providing continuous 24-7, 365 days a year data on the on where the pollutants are coming from with the wind speed and direction and what pollutants uh, people are being exposed to um, by the compressor station and by these other industrial facilities like this Calpine facility right here. So it's a big step forward in protecting the residents um, you know, with science, with data. Can you tell me what it took to get this monitoring station here? I, somebody said something that took a long time and a big fight. Well, the, the community and the Four River residents against the compressor station has been battling uh, for six years against this new compressor station. And for most of those years, they've realized that, you know, data is our strongest, um, you know, evidence of the injustice. And so from the very start, they've been arguing and advocating to get the air quality monitoring station in. So it's finally here now after such a long battle. And the elected um, officials that were here today were instrumental as well in in getting this sighted in. And really, you know, no one was gonna do anything. It, it's kind of like the squeaky wheel gets the, the oil. And if you don't demand stuff, it's not gonna happen. And so it's a victory for, for Frax and all of the people in the Four River Basin.